Welcome to another Model A Ford Mini Guide. In this video, we're going to talk about cylinder head nut torque and cylinder head nut tightening sequence. So, very common question that people have in internet forums and YouTube comments is how tight do you torque the head nuts on a Model A? 50 foot pounds, 55 foot pounds, 60 foot pounds? Well, in most cases, the answer is. Yes, all, all those numbers are fine. There is no right answer. You can just torque these guys as tight as you want. And people say, well, what were the original factory specs for torque? Well, there weren't any. There were no original factory specs for torque. There's no record that Ford used torque wrenches or any kind of torque validation during assembly. And there's also no mention of torque in any of the automotive maintenance manuals published at the time. In fact, very few home mechanics of 1930 would have even had access to a torque wrench. Uh, beam wrenches came on the market in the late 20s, click type wrenches came on in the late 30s, and, and they were both pretty expensive. Now, the closest thing that I've found so far to official guidance is a diagram. So this is in How to Restore Your Model A, Volume 1, Second Edition. So on page 42, There's this diagram from the great Murray Fonstock. And he was, the, uh, he was the technical editor of the official Ford dealer magazine during the Model A era. He was there at the time. And he published this in the Restorer magazine in 1967, a couple of years before he died at the age of 83. So this is pretty close to the official line on torque. And what he says is, that you, the final torque should be 50 foot-pounds, and he has you do it in three steps, going one-third of the way each time. And then he actually has you do it in reverse order. Uh, that seems like it might be overkill. So now the next question that you should be asking is, okay, well, is that 50 pounds dry or lubed? In other words, are you putting any lubricant on these stud threads before you put the nut on, because that is going to make a given value of torque have more clamping power. Well, the answer is probably not. It's probably dry. In my research, I've not found any evidence that these instructions assume that there was any lubricant on the threads. Um, typically, it would have been oil if there, if there was. But it was known at the time that you should lubricate the threads. So this is. Victor Paget, he wrote owner maintenance manuals for the Model T and the Model A. Uh, this says for the restore, but that's just because it's a later issue. The, he, he was writing in the 20s. This was advice that would have been current in the 20s. Uh, so this is page 272 of his Model A manual. And he says, uh, it is well to coat the threads of all bolts and screws subjected to heat, such as cylinder head nuts and exhaust pipe retaining clamp nuts, with a mixture of graphite and oil. So he knew to do this. Now again, graphite and oil, that's probably overkill. And with the benefit of 90 years of Model A history, we know that torquing to, say, 55 foot-pounds with a light coat of SAE 30 motor oil on the threads before we put the nut on, that works great for most cylinder heads. So 50 foot-pounds, as Fonstock recommends, with light coat of oil, perfectly safe. But again, if you want to use 55 foot-pounds dry or even 65 foot-pounds, that's also fine. None of these are bad choices. This is a forgiving engine. There are a lot of right answers. Aha, you say, but what about the tightening sequence? All right, so let's go back and look. This is, uh, I made a photocopy of Fonstock's tightening sequence. So you can see this is basically, this is a star sequence that starts in the middle and then alternates sides, All right? So one, two, three, and we start bouncing around four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, we're just alternating, 11, 12, 13, 14. So it alternates sides going out to the edge. So this is the recommended sequence. Is there any specific thing about the Model A head that requires you to use this exact sequence? Well, let's see. So 
this, here's the sequence. This is on a flathead V8. This is off the Ford 1948 shop manual. So you can see this one actually uses kind of a spiral pattern. One, two, circling around three, four, five, six, seven, go out here to eight, nine, 10, 11, circling back 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, circle around again, 17, 18, 19, 20, all the way around to 24. It doesn't bounce around, just does these rows, one right after the other. Is this wrong? No, it's just different. Um, so look, here's, here's three completely different tightening sequences published for the Model T. So look, this one's, this is the official sequence from the Model T Ford Club of America. Okay, so this one, it goes kind of, alternates right down this row in the middle, one, two, three, four, five, and then it goes out to the edges, six, seven, eight, nine, kind of doing the star pattern again, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Does these ones right down the middle though. Um, here's one, this is one from a 1920s maintenance manual. This one kind of, uh, it tries to like, it's like it's locking down these four quadrants. It's like one, two, three, four, five. So we got these and then we're gonna go kind of randomly around six, seven, eight, nine. Again, we're kind of bouncing back and forth to 11. And then we come back and we work in the middle, 12, 13, 14, 15. So this one does the edges first and then it does the middle. Um, here's one I found, this is some guy on the internet. So he, this one locks down the middle row first and then it's kind of spirally six, seven, eight, circle around to nine, 10, circle around to 11. He's kind of doing this zigzag thing, 12, 13, 14, 15. So, I mean, what do these approaches all have in common? Well, they all do, they all do the one thing that every maintenance manual says you have to do. They start in the middle and they work outward. That is actually the only real rule. The other thing that they have in common is that they all work. Every one of these sequences results in a head that works fine on the car. You don't have to do it just the approved way. So, so come back to this font stock sequence. So the biggest reason that you should know this sequence is that it gives you a common vocabulary with every other Model A owner. So if I say the number eight stud, okay, everybody knows which stud I mean. So you should know this sequence, but you should feel free to modify it. So for example, here's a water outlet. Now I like the, uh, so the, the 11 and 13 head nuts, kind of like this. They go through this water outlet and then through the cylinder head. And these ears are notorious for breaking. So one of the things that I like to do is I like to tighten these head nuts a little more carefully than the others. Just use smaller steps. So to do that, I modify this sequence to swap 11 and 14. So I do 9, 10, 11, 12. So now see I'm doing that spiral. 10, 11, 12. And then I spiral around and now I do 13 and then 14. Right? 13, 14. And so I can do up to 12 and then with my torque wrench I can back off my torque just a little bit, bring 13 and 14 up just a bit, bring the torque up again, do 13, 14 again. So now they're up with all the others and now I'm back to one. Now, should you do that? No, you can do whatever you want, as long as you stick to the basic rules. So, all right, what are the basic rules for torquing the cylinder head? Make sure your torque wrench is calibrated. Know how to use it. Torque wrenches have rules, like where to put your hand and how to store it. So learn the rules before you do a critical job like this. Always, always use new head nuts. Head nuts deform under load. They're designed that way. They should be used exactly once. If you reuse them, you could get a much higher clamp load or a much lower clamp load, and you won't have any way to know which one it is. 
Ideally, you should use new studs as well, or at a minimum, you should use studs that you know the complete history of. Make multiple passes, tightening all the head nuts to the same torque and then increasing the torque incrementally. They should do at least three passes. I've seen guys do five or six passes, nah, it probably doesn't matter. You should start each round in the middle, the center of the head, and then work your way gradually to the outside, trying to equalize the load on the front and back of the head. The exact sequence doesn't matter, but you should pick a sequence so that you don't accidentally miss one of the nuts. Each time you tighten a nut, start by backing it off about 20 to 30 degrees. And a lot of guys like to use a box or a socket wrench to break the nut loose, just to avoid the possibility of damaging the torque wrench. Now the standard for the stock head on a flat block in good condition, 55 foot-pounds with a light coat of oil. But you know, five foot-pounds on either side of that, very common as well. A lot of guys torque these dry. You know what? All those heads work fine. They, they all work fine. Having said that, if you're using a new aftermarket head, like a Brumfield or a Yap or a Snyder head, don't listen to me. Listen to the manufacturer. Follow their procedure. Do not void your warranty. All right, that is all the rules. If you follow these rules, pretty much all the other decisions are just personal preference. Don't overthink it. Just pick an approach and go.